Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Chewy. We're home. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Today is April 21st, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TVs, things we watch on screens in front of our faces. I'm Malango at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorga Sorgatron Media. How's it going? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to talk some movies. They're kicking off this podcast day, as we usually do, at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm so happy to hang out with my friends and talk movies. And of course, our New York connection, Mad Mike. So many trailers, so many trailers, so many trailers, so many trailers. Okay, Mike. It's okay, Mike. It's okay, Mike. Mike, we're all friends. We're going to get through this together. (laughs) Just breathe and uh, probably try opening your eyes a little bit. So many. If I open my eyes, someone's going to drop another trailer, Sork. Uh, Why? Okay. Well, this is the time for me to share with you the new product from Sorgco, the trailer filter. You just put on these shades, and uh, you will see nothing but (laughs) Star Wars Episode One trailers, and it'll calm you down. I was gonna say nothing but what, (laughs) Sork. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for that. We'll just blame that on a Google Hangout drop, okay? (laughs) (laughs) It's like the Uh, infomercial that just keeps you going or hanging. It's like, oh, and and wait, there's more. (laughs) Well, dramatic pause for $9.99 and four easy installments. Mwango? Oh, the first trailer, the trailer of the week. This is the the biggie, right? This is the... uh, the Omega trailer. The trailer to end all other trailers that they all bow before. I hope we're talking about the same trailer here. <laughs> I believe we are. Uh, you are talking Star Wars Force mm-hmm. Awakens trailer. Are we not? Episode 7. Um, yeah. This. Alright. So I am a J.J. Abrams fanboy anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just going to be biased to say like. I am totally freaking pumped for this movie. Now, are you more and of an Abrams fan than you are a Star Wars fan? No, so I am a Star Wars fan because I grew up. Well, I didn't grow up to, like I didn't grow up when the movies were coming out because mm-hmm. I was still a kid. So yes, I did grow up during that time frame, but I did not go see the movies in theater. I was the one who would you know go out get grab the DVDs, see four, five, and six, and then I waited for one, two, and three to come out. So as a Star Wars fan, yes, I was more on the Star Wars thing than the Star Trek thing. So I'm very excited about this. And then after seeing what J.J. Abrams did with Star Trek, I was very excited to hear that he was going to be doing Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And after seeing this trailer, I am buying my movie ticket tonight. I'm so pleased because it's it's not I mean, it's it's not a reboot for, you know, like Star Trek really was. You know, so we don't have a lot of new rules coming into this. Um, yep. But uh, other than that, we re- erased all the rules of the expanded universe of the last 30 years. But I am i don't <laughs> mind. Uh, but uh, th- no, it's exciting. It, and it hits the points. We have teasers for Luke and Leia. We have Han and Chewie, their home baby, as you saw at the beginning of the show. Um, I'm excited for it. It's got me going. Uh, it's going to be a long time until December. See, I'm a weird Star Wars fan. Um, I didn't watch it when I was a kid. Right. The first Star Wars movie I saw was when I was in grad school. And HBO On Demand had all six Star Wars movies on demand. So I watched them chronologically. You are a late not, comer. Not release date. See, I watched them, and I don't know what order, but I'm pretty sure I watched them like when they came on television. Okay. Like on network television. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure like, and then we recorded those and that's what I watched over and over again until we finally got the tapes. The nice, I still have the box set 
And I actually think uh, there is partially something recorded on part of Empire Strikes Back that we accidentally did on <laughs> VHS. Like the first like nice box that they did of the black tapes and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up on this stuff. We had some Star Wars toys floating around uh, that I utterly destroyed as a child, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, it's a long time coming. And this is, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not around old enough to have gone to the theater i think i might have been able to see one in my lifetime um mm-hmm. but uh i know my sister did you know uh and, and I, I should take i should go with her I mean, she'd be yeah. even more excited about this because okay? you, you know star- it's her birthday this weekend uh <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say the only star wars movie i actually have gone to see in a theater is when they did the 3d re-release of phantom menace oh so, not exactly the best choice i saw but, um re-release first re-release of uh, a new hope then get back for the rest of them like those special edition ones and uh and went for all every one of the prequels so you know whether i liked it or not i went to all the prequels i'm like i have to it's star wars right so <laughs> yeah definitely Lego. yeah i know i think at a comic-con i i don't remember what i think variety wrote this story but during one of the uh, Comic Con uh, press release or their like shows things, um, George Lucas was saying like he doesn't even know what the final like uh, story is going to be for seven, which is really interesting. Um, but I don't know if that because I don't remember where the source was. I can't legitimize that that is necessarily true. That he would have nothing. Like I know he's not obviously he's not directing this. Right, but I feel like he would have some input. Although it would be good if he had no input. I don't think he has any input whatsoever. There might be some notes on where he wanted to go with the series, but whatever happened with that, they took that and and J.J. Abrams and whoever wrote this one just, I think, are taking their own direction. I I just assume Chewie and Groot are going off on an adventure at the end of seven. (laughs) Would that be amazing? (laughs) I mean, you know, might as well tie it all in. Just right, right. Yeah, um, yes. So, after seeing this trailer, we're still on board, right? We are definitely pumped. We're all pumped to see this movie. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. This is this is, mm-hmm. this is is happening. This is happening in December. I don't care where I'm at, what's going on. I am seeing Star Wars at least <laughs> opening weekend. There's no question on this, dude. Just like Avengers, opening weekend. This is happening. There's nothing. There's there, it, 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 Hey, it's happening. So, what you're saying is, Moses could be parting the Red Sea and you would say, nope. Sorry, Star, Star Wars. Wars is coming out. Uh, we've yeah. all been waiting, some of us, literally our entire lives, to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just hope we don't have another episode one situation in our hands. I, I mean, I'm excited for it. Yes. I'm not any more excited than I was for it, based on my Star Wars experience. But I, it, was, it was a fun trailer. I want to see more about what's going on. Because mm-hmm. I, I don't like teasers like that where they just where it's just like flash 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 flash. I need to see at least something, like right. a little bit of substance. Is enough? Well, there I mean there are a ton of breakdowns that people have spent way too much time. Well, of course, and, and there's little things. Chachi got hung up on this. What does he mean? My father has the force. I don't think that's Luke. I don't think it's Luke. I think it's a red herring. You think so? Yeah. Interesting. Red five, red herring. I think it's... <laughs> anyways. Anyways. <laughs> what else we got on the plate, Malengo? Well, before we jump to the plate, let's jump to the good old box office this weekend. Sure. Where, as everybody expected, cars still drive fast. 29 point something million, Furious 7... The big one, uh, which actually wasn't a big one, people actually went to go see Paul Blart. Paul Blart. Paul Paul Blart. Paul Blart. Because people like Segway humor, sir. And people want to see something funny. Um, By the way... way But, Sword, you just disproved your own point. People want to see something funny. Yeah, so don't go see that. Uh, uh, I enjoy Paul Blart one. I, I, I don't. Unfriended. This just means they're gonna make a Paul Blart three, and that's gonna be very. You know, I got, I got, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, at midnight, uh, completely pulled the uh, 
uh, yeah, we're probably the reason $25 million was made for Paul Blart 2. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and they were not advertising. They were just did a game around add Paul Blart, ruin a movie. Add, add Blart to a movie. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but still, hey, people wanted to see it. And, and you know, this kind of humor, people come out for it. They wouldn't keep making it, guys. Monkey Kingdom, number eight. Monkey Kingdom, the thing that's been plaguing me on my Stitcher, reminding me that it's coming out this weekend. Um, but... Hey, it's a nature film. What, what do you want? So, um, but no, yeah, I, I can definitely see Furious dominating uh, until something more significant comes out. Probably until Avengers. I don't know anything else before then. Well, it's only a week until Avengers. Yeah, that's true. A week and a half. That's true. I, I think the most interesting thing about this is like Unfriended came out this weekend, and that was the one that actually got higher ratings than people expected. And this, but this is the it only the, pulled in fifteen. This is the move of move Blair Witch via Skype movie. Yeah. Um, so, like, which is still, I think, an intriguing concept in this day and age. I'll be interested to see next weekend because this is the or this weekend. This is the last weekend, right before <laughs> next weekend we have Avengers. Mm-hmm. So this is the last weekend. I would be interested interested to see if any steam continues with Unfriended. I think this is it. I don't think it's going to make any money. And same with with Mall Cop too. It cost them thirty million to make. I don't think, I mean, they might scratch that $30 million, but I don't think they're going to get a third movie because I don't think it's going to make any money. Maybe on back-end sales from, like, uh, DVDs. <laughs> that's basically it, but I, I think that's the market. I think you underestimate that a lot like, uh, when you look at these box offices. Um, I think, uh, yeah, something like Unfriended is going to do crazy, crazy business yeah. when it goes to HBO and Netflix and, and everything else and Redbox. I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, yeah, it gets, like, the theaters, like, seem to be, uh, you know, for everybody but the top-end guys like Avengers, um, and I'm no movie economist, but, uh, you know, they seem to be just kind of advertisements and reminders, like, hey, I hope you guys check this out in six months, or, I'm sorry, three months when it's on DVD. Well, I mean, look at Mallrats. Mallrats was a lot at the theater and 20 years later we're getting more rats too mm-hmm. in the theater like uh, things have longer legs now than they did there was a, a interesting interview on nerdist actually with uh cal Penn from Harold and kumar talked about how that movie just absolutely flopped and they were excited going into it because it was a dual uh not white lead you know what i mean uh and and, and they said it did absolutely nothing but all the stoners passing the movie around in the colleges is what made it popular that they made two more of them. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I can't imagine people make movies like that. And, uh, and, uh, Zach and Mary make a porno thinking, well, this is obviously going to be big box office numbers. Like, no, you're going to find that you're going to find your niche otherwise. And I, I don't know. I think it's that perception. And, uh, that's why you have some of those kinds of movies just going straight to, Netflix or digital because those people will go buy it and stoners don't leave the house anyways and they have no reason to because they can buy all the movies they want on Xbox. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to segue into this because you kind of just cracked the door open for it. Uh-oh. Speaking of things going straight to Netflix, is anybody excited about the Full House reunion? <laughs> I need to see more of this. I'm kind of worried about this. Like, what the hell could they um, do with this? You know? From what I... What I've heard, uh, apparently DJ is going to be pregnant and a widow, and she already has two kids, one of whom is named JD. <laughs> That's going to get effing confusing. Uh, yeah. It's going to get, and it's, it's supposedly surrounded, like surrounding DJ and Kimmy Gibbler. What? Yeah, and Gibbler also has a feisty teenager daughter. Of course she does. Uh, I forget who the other what was oh the younger sister. So yeah, so Stephanie Tanner and her younger sister are gonna be living in the same house with Gibbler. Wait, wait, Stephanie and Michelle? I uh, haven't no, heard that. No, not Michelle. Uh, they had another a sister in between. No, they didn't. Oh. Um, this article says her younger sister and aspiring musician Stephanie Tanner. Yeah, yeah that's the middle child. Oh, that's all right. Stephanie so, was the middle child. Oh, good. So 
just like uh, Joey was an aspiring musician, Steffi's yep. going to be an aspiring musician. It's basically the exact same story, just flipped. Whatever happened to predictability? Yes. Uh, the news broke on Jimmy Kimmel with uh, John Stamos saying uh, he basically broke the news. Um, 13 episodes for what they're calling a sequel. And what he said is that the first episode, he would like it to be a reunion mm -hmm. to get everybody back together, and then it spins off from there. Red, give everybody a paycheck. I really uh, hope they just get the kid back from Aladdin. This is the, the thing that that maybe first of all, like I know the Olsen twins aren't going to be on there, no matter what they say. I know they're not coming back, even if it's for a cameo for one episode. I don't see them doing it. Two, did anybody see the horrible Girl Meets World? This is what I was reminded of. It wasn't that bad. It's it's on <laughs> par. No, no, it's on par for what Disney um, live action stuff does on Disney Channel. Right. It, it, it's yeah. on par. With it, it. it wasn't really aimed at. Us that watched TGIF back in the day, um, the, no, yeah, I, 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 and I never watched. To be honest, I, I never had the opportunity. Uh, but the little bit I saw, I was like, no, this is this is a Disney Channel show. This isn't the ABC primetime show that we knew and loved. So, but no, nah, it's fine. But but still, something your kids could watch. And be like, I remember watching this back in the day. So, yeah, yeah, uh, Netflix. Sometimes I wonder. But speaking of Netflix, or leaving Netflix, going back to Star Wars real quick, Mike, explain to me, or Sorg, explain to me, what is Rogue One? So basically, and is this a is this a full fledged movie that's independent? It is. Or it is. Rogue One is going to be part of the Star Wars anthology series. So basically, it's sort of a mid prequel sort of thing the plot is going to focus on the death star and them stealing the plants this is kind of the in-between tales and this is going to be uh you know from what i've read about this it's going to be about this is what it was like in wartime uh the, one of the explanations that i read on here and i don't know if it's in the article you posted here um for the variety but uh you know basically uh the not all of the good guys are good guys and not all the bad guys are bad guys because this is war and people flip sides and there's assholes and and people are dealing with that so it's dealing with the regular people the rebels not the jedis not anything like that nobody with the magical the magical powers or anything like that right um and uh and i think uh I, I, it's gonna be a one-off it's gonna be a one-off and they're gonna do a series of one-offs basically as part of this so uh does that make sense Blango? that makes sense but what like where will we where will we find this? Is this going to be on network television? Is this going to be I'd say, on like I think it's going to be a full-fledged film. Yeah, I heard theatrical for it. Yeah, it's going to be a theatrical. Oh, wow. So I think in between your new episodes, you're going to get these films. And also, um, Disney did confirm that I don't know if you guys heard this. This wasn't in the notes. I'm just springing it on you. Uh, Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc pit. Right. So... I, I'm I'm going to make this plea right now. Can we please have Quentin Tarantino do a Boba Fett movie? <gasps> there is, and one of the words is one of the anthologies is going to be a Boba Fett movie. Please, please, uh, Django Fett Unchanged. <laughs> I, I need something like this in my life. I really do. I really need it. Like that. That to me would get me right in. <laughs> Oh man! All right, let's let's jump into these because we have a lot of trailers that I know we want to so talk about. Many trailers. All right, so let's just just jump into by I'm I'm just gonna deem this by order of interest. Fantastic Four because I just watched it. Uh, this is a trailer where uh, Miles Taylor uh, definitely makes me think that Reed is actually gonna be an entertaining character, mm -hmm. and um. After seeing this trailer, uh, like Mike, you were saying that some trailers, especially with Star Wars, where it's flash, 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 this was not flash, flash, flash. I felt like they actually explained something here. And their explanation made me, I did not care about this movie. I saw this trailer, and now I care about this movie a lot. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Like, I mean, I was going to go see it. Because it was a Marvel property, it was Fantastic Four. You know, I was gonna go see it anyway. But now, I am more inclined to see Opening Night. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm more inclined to maybe even see it more than once if I like it. Uh, I really, really enjoyed just getting to see some of the stuff that they, that hasn't been done in a Fantastic Four movie, like the Negative Zone and stuff like that. And it looked really interesting to see, like, like almost that they can't control their powers at all. Like, the scene where Johnny is lying on the slab and he just, like, explodes into flame. Like, it seemed really, really cool, and I hope they explore that more. Like, I mean, it's it's darker than I would expect the Fantastic Four movie to be, but I think it works. I mean, it looks interesting enough. Yeah, I think that's the... All right, so, like, two points I want to make about, like, it being dark... I don't know, like, we've gotten to this weird point where, like, at, at one point, I agree with you, like, it is darker than Fantastic Four, I feel like, should be, but we got to this weird point where, like, all these movies started taking, like, this dark, methodical, like, theme to it, so, I don't know, I, I as of right now, I kind of like that, but I agree, Fantastic Four wasn't really always that dark, um, but two, the other point was, this and Ant-Man, both of these came out, and I was like, Marvel, like, you know, I'm like, Marvel, these are going to be Marvel's, like, down points. These are going to be the movies that nobody's going to care about. And both of these trailers have totally sucked me back in, where now it's like, Marvel can do no wrong at this point. I still don't see why everyone is so down on Ant-Man. I think, I think it's because people are thrown off by the actual, pardon the pun, scale of the movie. But I think Ant-Man is going to be a surprise hit. And I, because Paul Rudd is funny, Michael Douglas gets to be a dick. Like, it just seems like I, I'm really, really excited for Ant-Man. Yeah. Sorg, do you have any opinion on, on Fantastic Four? I'm mostly sitting here agreeing, and I forgot I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, it definitely showed a good bit. Yes, uh, and you mentioned about the darkness. It's dark, but not gritty. <laughs> yeah, like we're getting yeah. everything everything else right um and i think that's i uh, it is it's something different um I'm, I'm looking forward to it well let's flip the coin on dark and gritty and go to something that should be dark and gritty but it's probably just gonna suck batman versus superman oh no <laughs> mm -hmm. no so now as i was saying before the uh in the pre-show that this reminded me of the comic book, but uh, Mike, you were you had a very strong opinion against that because you said there's nothing thus far to show that this will be anything like the comic book. Okay, um, gonna gonna get a tad ranty. I, I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh my God, he's wearing the suit from The Dark Knight Returns." Like, yes, yes, he is. But you know what? If you actually read The Dark Knight Returns. That's the only imagery that is evoked in the rest of this trailer. The rest of this trailer screams to me that they're doing something like the series called Injustice, where Superman is actually the villain. and Superman has, um, because he's the most powerful being on the planet, it, he's completely corrupted. But even the thing about that comic series is Superman started out being the beacon of good. And the only reason he turned to the dark side was because the Joker tricked him into killing his wife and unborn child. Spoilers. Sorry, this is panel ride territory, but <laughs> uh, Man of Steel did nothing to show to me that we should already be at this point with Superman. False. Like, False. Well, yeah, well, I think I think we're you know, we're fast tracking things. We don't know how much time is going to go, but I think the Man of Steel, you know, whereas this is not my my Superman or anything like that, it did show. I felt it was more. This is what would happen. It was a more realistic realistic representation because if a guy in a suit dropped down as an alien like he did, I think that's how a military would respond, and then being partially responsible for destroying like the their equivalent of New York City. And having something that's even more, you know, even worse than 9/11 happen to them, there's going to be a reaction. There's going to, and, and and if an all-powerful being like this showed up, wouldn't you think there would be a religious, like he's a god or he's a false god, and this debate would happen? And I think that's the most interesting part of this and most interesting spin on this. But no, it's just like the Dark Knight movies were not my Batman that I want to see on the screen. 
and, and carry on at least the vibe of what I liked about Batman, this isn't going to either. But yet stuff like Flash, Arrow, and anything Marvel these days, it seems, does have that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost like DC is ignoring what made their characters popular in the first place. Uh -huh. it, it very much seems like that because we've never seen Batman be a detective in a no. movie. No, we have not. Like, I mean, he, yeah, he's the Dark Knight. But the third word on that is Dark Knight detective. Like, if anything, Gotham has gotten closer to that than any movie that they that DC's put out. True. Yeah. That's sad because that we're not even getting into Gotham. That's <laughs> no, just no, sad. we're not. No, we're not. Uh, yeah, I don't. I I guess this could be like a what we think based on the comic books that we read, um, in previous animated movies versus what they're actually going to present. Also, DC's doing a horrible. Yes, like you said, Mike. They're doing a horrible job of representing their characters, like from what they originally were. Also, to note, there will be an Aquaman and Wonder Woman in this movie, mm. and a cyborg, and a Lex Luthor, and they have they've announced so many characters for this movie, and yet that teaser showed nothing. Yeah, that teaser showed essentially what they showed at San Diego Comic Con. But we also have ten months until this comes out. I know that, but I mean, you're tr they're trying to get Buzz uh, off of the Avengers hype. Here's, what, here's my only question. This didn't do it. This didn't do it for me. If they were to say, okay, where are you going to go the route of Lord of the Rings with this? This is going to be a three-hour movie. Would that would that help like smooth over some of the stuff? That's not what the problem is. That's not what the problem that's, is. That's not the issue. No, you don't think so. No, it's you can have a, you could have an hour. I, I think some of the cartoons they've done in in in, in seventy minutes. Have been more fleshed out than than some. Than, I mean, that that's not the issue. Yeah, they, they, I, they, I may talk about one of those cartoons later, Sword. Maybe. Um, I and I, I say I I I like Man of Steel and I like it for what it is, but it's not. It doesn't evoke the this is Superman to me, but I like it. So. And I'm just scared. I'm right. just scared that it's going to make a lot of money and people are going to think that that means it's a good movie. And it may not be. Well, I mean, I honestly think this is DC's, like, like this is their plan to get to a Justice League. And... It's almost like throwing a Hail Mary in the first play of a football game. Like, yeah. like you don't have to throw everything at the screen at once. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Uh, but, oh, and also, one last thing. I know it's, I know it's supposed to be the Frank Miller suit. It looks like Lego Batman. <laughs> it does. Uh, it, holy man. crap! I can't, I almost I can't expect see that the internet to be saying darkness. Like, it just looks like Lego Batman. Uh, all right. Let's jump. Let's let's leave. Let's leave that that world of uncertainty and go to a world where. Things were supposed to be Jurassic and awesome and our childhood all brought, brought back to us. And this trailer actually started off where I'm like, freaking A, this is awesome. This is exactly what I want to see. And then about halfway through, it kind of got to this like comical thing where they were almost replaying shots that occurred in the first Jurassic Park. And it ended with me saying like, I don't know if we needed this movie. <laughs> I went from like, so much excitement to, oh my gosh, <laughs> what? This is just going to be Jurassic Park again. Like, okay. Is it just me, or does the CG look worse than the animatronic that they had with the first Jurassic Park? Yes, it it does. Um, and the sad thing is, like when you when you hold too much uh, too much on one character. I.e. Chris Pratt, I, that is scary because like he's the only one that's gonna hold this movie up. I don't know. Well, yeah, if, mean, we're, if we're complaining about the dinosaur already or the hybrid who starts communicating with other dinosaurs, oh jeez. Yeah, if, if there's a tell, if there's a uh, telepathic communication between the dinosaurs, I'm out. I don't know, guys. I think the sequel to Blackfish is looking really good here. 
<laughs> oh man, this is a movie that uh, in my movie draft I picked up thinking this is going to be the resurgence of Jurassic World, and now I'm worried. Maybe maybe it'll have the same effect that the first one had, where kids will see this for the first time, they'll be really pumped, there'll be this whole spike of like, oh, dinosaurs on the big screen. Well, I mean, I think it's safe to say that the dinosaurs in Jurassic World are going to move a heck of a lot faster than, uh, <laughs> than, than Jurassic Park. But I don't know. I mean, I think they're counting more on um, Chris Pratt and dinosaurs to sell it than anything regarding the story. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Um, and like I said, this is a good franchise. This was a good franchise. I mean, this is a we're bringing Steven, Steven, uh, Steven Spielberg back. Like, I don't know. I, I just hope the movie's actually better than what I'm. Hopefully, it's just a really bad cut of a trailer. <laughs> All right, the last movie. This one, I am. This is a movie that. Uh, Tomorrowland. The first teaser came out, and everybody was like, oh, you know, well, I was like, oh, Brad Bird's on it, so maybe this is going to be good. You know, you got George Clooney in it. And the first teaser, nobody knew what was going on, right? Then I think they come up with, like, another teaser during the Super Bowl or something. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, okay, they gave us, like, a little bit more stuff, but I still have no freaking idea what this movie is. This is the trailer for this freaking movie. Oh my gosh, I am pumped. This movie looks freaking amazing. You know, th there are certain trailers that when you watch them the first time, um, you know you kind of have to see it in a large screen format or in a 3D environment or something. Yeah. And Tomorrowland seems like definitely one of those movies. Like, it just look, it looks really exciting. I hope that they didn't just take the big action cue and cut it just to put it one way <laughs> but which entirely possible <laughs> but you know i mean it, it does look interesting and who doesn't love Clooney? so yeah yeah i i mean i'm hoping there's a lot more to this because we don't know anything about the other world right but um even the fact that the the robotic soldiers appear i mean i don't know everything just made me feel like like oh this is this is Sci-fi, it has it. It has it all. Good story, and I mean Brad Bird is a really good director. Uh, but besides Mission Impossible, everything else has been uh, animated releases. So I, I mean, I think this is going to be interesting. And the person that co-wrote the script, uh, Damon uh, Lindelof, he did Star Trek in the Darkness and Prometheus. So I mean. I also assume we're we're going to get some sort of mountain of space. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm excited. Sorg, you have no opinion on this. I have opinions. <laughs> um, I know it, it 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 it's not a movie that has me terribly excited to go to the theater or anything. I mean, it's much in the vein of you know seeing the Wizard of Oz or Return. Or what was the last one? The Oz, Great Powerful Oz, whatever. I'm sorry, I saw the commercial on USA that was coming to TV. Um, I mean, it, it's on that level with me. You know, I, I, I'm interested, but I'm not movie theater interested for it. So, okay. uh, hey, can I point in? We had a, a from Chuckle John in the chat room here at live.sorgatronmedia.com where you can join at 6 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. Uh, he says there is a theory that this is the first uh, Jurassic Pearl world is the first to set up in almost a Jurassic Park Planet of the Apes style world. Oh, God. Yeah, like I said, a movie that started with so much potential. We'll see. Sigh. We'll see the execution. Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus. No, we, 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 don't, we don't need a planet of the dinosaurs. We don't need that. If you want that, just watch Dinosaurs on Netflix. Uh, yes. <laughs> Speaking of dinosaurs and what they eat, Mike, what are you eating? 
or Sork, what are you eating? <laughs> well, we got some fine pizza from Slice on Broadway. Our friends over here, we actually just had a lot of fun. There's the birthday girl on the couch, actually, that we just had a party. They made a hello. There, there's the pizza, too. She's not Ashley, but uh, so please ignore that. She's here for at Stutters for the awesome cast here in a few. Uh, but yes, uh, fine pizza from Slice on Broadway in the South Hills and Beachview uh, in Pittsburgh, if you're along the tracks here, or in Carnegie, PA. Please check them out, and uh, <laughs> and, and, and they're, they're so awesome. They made Hello Kitty pizzas for us. I don't know if you saw these on Instagram while I go, uh, but, uh, I, I, but I saw them. Sorry. They were definitely very open to new ideas for special occasions, and it was pretty sweet. They actually had two attempts. One was like a Hello Kitty dough doll. And the so, other was like more just a design on a pizza kind of so thing. So, Sorg, I have a question. Mm. Uh, when Star Wars comes out, you are getting a Millennium Falcon pizza. Oh, we're going to have to try the Millennium Falcon pizza, yes. <laughs> uh, start, actually, can you tweet them right now and see if they can if they have any plans for that uh, on occasion here? So. I don't know. They still haven't gotten back to me about chicken nuggets on pizza. So. <laughs> Why don't they have they, – well, that's the other thing. They have fresh ingredients. I don't know a place where you can get fresh chicken nuggets uh per se that they have on their pizzas so all right uh I, I, i'm gonna try and wheel us back in because we are way over mm -hmm. uh what we were watching or what we watched or what we should have watched all right i'm gonna say real quick daredevil we're gonna talk about it next week but yes. i liked it a lot i just thought the ending uh, was kind of weak yeah. so it's valley i like where it's going yes um lots of fun game of thrones I love the political stuff in Game of Thrones. I freaking what? wish it was like Netflix and just gave me the entire thing all at once. Well, if you look in the right places, you can at least catch four episodes. So. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. No, definitely not. Certainly not. Um, all right. For what I watched really quickly, uh, I watched Interstellar. I really didn't like it. It felt like a bad Doctor <laughs> Who episode. Um Yes. I, I watched Your Next, which is the horror movie that had the lamb masks in it. Uh, don't ever see that movie. It's on Netflix, and I still feel like I overpaid. I'd rather watch five Kevin Hart movies in a row. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I watched Silicon Valley. Uh, as Malika said, awesome ending. Really good. I like the way that they're going. Uh, Game of Thrones bored me this week. Sorry, all Game of Thrones people. It just kind of oh, didn't get me. And um, I saw Batman vs. Robin, which is the new DC animated movie. Uh, really a lot of fun. They do a variation of the Court of Owls storyline from the comic books. They have uh, talent in there. They have an awesome Robin vs. Nightwing fight, which is really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend it, and definitely way better than Batman v. Superman. Awesome. Nice. Sword, what about you? Uh, Game of Thrones, Silicon Valley, all awesome. Uh, watched the entire uh, line of superhero TV shows that we have going on these days, it seems. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else did I, I... I forget. Oh, a couple episodes of Daredevil. I think I'm, a, I'm up to the part where the, where the Russians... Uh, things happen to the Russians. Um, <laughs> yeah, up through that part. Don't let the door hit you on the way out of that one. Sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets <laughs> it gets interesting. Um, but I like it. I, I like the um, I like the siege episode. I think it's maybe been the last or next to last one that I watched. Um, but no, really, really liking how that's developing in general. And the girlfriend, the hit well, uh, uh, Kingpin's girlfriend, the thing where she oh, kinda, yeah. where she kind of comes around to things mm -hmm. and the explodey part. Uh, yes, I thought that was really interesting because you don't think she's going to be somebody on board with this. Um, oh, and uh, uh, semi spoilerly I'm sorry. Like, no, no, it's, we've seen it, Sork. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about you, but yeah, <laughs> you can't okay. ruin it. I'm, I'm worried about our it. tens and tens of listeners. We we will have a whole spoilery episode once you finish Daredevil. Hopefully also, so. um, I forgot to mention, I Zombie is really really good. People should be watching it. Yes, it it's is. Very oh. well written. Uh, it's funny. It's clever, and the acting is really, really good. What channel does that come on? CW. CW. It's on right. right after Flash. I will I will check that out. Yes. Um, coming out this weekend in theaters, X Mach uh, X Machina? Machina. Machina. Is it Machina? Mm -hmm. I have yes. no idea what that's about, but right now it's rocking um, an 88%. Actually, uh, X Machina, I saw the trailer for it. I'm 
really excited for it. It's kind of like a horror thriller movie that deals a lot with uh, personal AI. And it just seems like a really creepy thriller flick. I was thinking of going to see it this week. It looks like an episode of The Black Mirror. Yeah. But less British. That's interesting. Also, The Age of Adeline. Uh, This is basically... I I explained it wrong to somebody. But basically, this this lady uh, gets in a car accident. She cannot age. Something happens where she can't age. She gets struck by lightning. And, uh, (laughs) And she basically goes X amount of years without anything. And she eventually dates someone who's, and then she goes to meet that person's father. That person's father was also someone she dated, which is Harrison Ford. So we're home, Adeline. Yeah. Those are probably the two biggest. I mean, the there's one with Russell Crowe in it, but I don't think this is going to be, I mean, do you guys think Fast and Furious is going to win out again this week? Yes. Yeah, yep. so going. To, it's going to be dominant until Avengers blows it out of the water. Please, Avengers, come, come sooner. All right, uh, where can we find you guys? Mad Mike. I am Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machines. I talk about all things nerdy, spoilery, and bacony, and I'm also on the Wrestling Mayhem show later tonight. And if you want to hear more about comics, like I was talking about today, but from a different mouth from my own, listen to Panel Riot with our own DJ Lunchbox. Nice. And Sorg of Sorgatron. Sorgatronmedia.com is where everything is. New Sawto Willy? Sawtooth Willy episodes? Sure. I, I, I'm sure he'll do something with that. Uh, new Sawtooth Willy, new articles up there, new videos. Uh, we visited the Toonzium last week, hoping to have that video with some Ninja Turtles action coming up this week. And uh, so much more. And all the crazy stuff that we do. And uh, that's what I got. Cool, and make sure you check out our Facebook group at Rambling Movie Minute and our website, Time to Ramble. Hopefully, Ashley will be uh, starting to write some reviews. She's been talking about that. Oh. And I got I think I gave Andrew all the information for that, so hopefully I, he'll and, start adding And, and I stuff. did a review over there for The Sheik about the Iron Sheik uh, last week, so go check that review out as well. Yep, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango. And uh, that's it for this week of Rambling Movie Minute. Thanks for hanging out with us, and until next week, have a rambling movie weekend. We're home, Malengo. Cha-ching. We are home. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.